Greetings everyone. I am Patrick Jones, Director of Media Services at Toledo Faith Outreach Christian Center, sitting in today for our senior pastor with The Daily Word. Today I want to focus on being prepared. The concept of being prepared is important for many reasons, but chief among them is obeying what our Lord Jesus Christ himself commands us to do as believers while we await his glorious return. The importance of being prepared is amply laid out in a parable told by Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 25 and verses 1 through 13. It says, and I quote, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all of those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No. There will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. And verse 13 says, Keep awake therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. End of quote. Do you sometimes get anxious about something? It could be something at work, school, or in your personal life. Right now, all of Belize is anxious about the dreaded coronavirus, which is commonly referred to as COVID-19. Our health authorities have been imploring us to exercise social distancing, stay at home, avoid gathering in crowds, and washing hands regularly as some of the measures to help slow the spread of the coronavirus. It is in a time like this that the parable of Jesus in Matthew chapter 13 comes into sharp focus for me. The story of the wise and foolish bridesmaids is an occasion for us as believers to be anxious as we await the return of Jesus, the same Jesus who died on Calvary's cruel cross for our sins, the same crucified Jesus who was dead and buried but arose triumphant on that first Easter Sunday. Jesus' parable of the bridesmaids reminds us, it reminds us all of the importance of being ready. We are to be ready at all times for his second coming. Jesus' parable for us as believers is a lesson about the future and the importance of preparedness over planning. In the scripture we read today, we find that the wise bridesmaids got to the party and the logical conclusion is that they did so because they were prepared. They ensured that they had an ample supply of the much needed oil. They prepared for the party. The other bridesmaids simply had a plan. On the appointed time when the oil was needed, they said, let's go buy some oil. And while they were gone to look for oil, as outlined in their plan, they missed the party and on their return, they were locked out. As Christians, our approach to the future involves prayer and preparation. Those two things for us as believers, according to the Bible, are more valuable than prediction and planning. You see, much of what happens to us is beyond our control. But what we absolutely must do is prepare to deal with what happens. We have to roll with the punches. None of us anticipated COVID-19. In fact, up until last December, None of us knew anything about a thing called coronavirus. We do not plan the things that happen to our family, but that does not stop sickness or accidents or death 
or even a crisis such as the one we are currently facing. The typical approach, as has been rolled out by our health authorities and indeed the government, involves prediction and planning, or in the phrase just added to our vocabulary, mapping. All through the Bible, we see God's desire for us as his people to pray and prepare for Jesus' intervention. I do not find anywhere in the Bible where it says that we are to make plans and then submit those plans to God for a divine blessing. In Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 9, we read, and I quote, The human mind plans the way, but the Lord directs the steps. End of, end of quote. Later on in Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 21, we learn that, and I quote again, The human mind may devise many plans, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will be established. End of quote. Do you think that at this crucial time in our lives, we should be engaged more in prayer and preparing for God's intervention instead of telling God what to do? I have seen and heard countless friends and even family members posting on social media invoking God to make coronavirus go away or for God to halt the spread of this worldwide pandemic. But as believers, our role is to be praying and preparing for God's intervention so that we are ready for what comes after God fulfills his plans for our future. Ultimately, what will happen is not up to us, but we can be prepared by staying constant in prayer. In the Old Testament book of Genesis, at the 12th chapter, we read where God instructed Abraham to go on a journey, but God did not tell Abraham where he was going. For many of us today, I believe that even if God himself would have given us or would give us such an instruction, we would spend countless hours questioning God about everything from the shoes to wear to perhaps which of our friends we should take along with us on this journey. Abraham was not given the opportunity to plan an itinerary. In fact, according to the Bible, Abraham just had enough time to tell his family that he was going on a journey. Then he packed up his tent and he was off on the journey. The story of the Exodus from Egypt is a powerful testimony of prayer and preparation. God planned the Exodus. Moses did not get to see the plan ahead of time. The Israelites prepared by marking their doors, taking everything they could carry, eating fast food, and waiting for the word to move out. John the Baptist preached saying, prepare the way of the Lord. Notice he didn't say plan the way of the Lord. The truth of the matter is, based on the Bible, that God does the planning and we do the preparing. God is the one who says in Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 11 to 13, and I quote, For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not to harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me, even if you seek me with all your heart. End of quote. Notice that God doesn't say, let me know when you come up with plans for your future that you want me to bless. As we get ready to observe the end of this season of Lent, this year it is going to be like no other in our lifetime. It is a marked departure from what we are used to. But it does give us an opportunity to be quiet, to seek God, to hear his voice, to stay safe, and be prepared for what God has in store for us going forward. Preparing involves calling upon the Lord, coming to God in relationship, praying, seeking the Lord with all of our heart. Our faith is not one more item on a to-do list. Our faith forms our 
to be and to do list. Throughout Matthew's Gospel, Jesus teaches people about living and growing in relationship with God. Jesus stresses that being spiritually alive means not just knowing religious information or even saying we believe certain doctrines, but doing what Jesus teaches regarding love for God and love for our neighbor. As believers, we do not know who is prepared and who is not, and it is not for us to try to find that out. We each must make sure that we are prepared. In the parable we shared with you, Jesus tells us that five of the bridesmaids were foolish and five were wise. But just by looking at them, nobody could tell. What set them apart was their state of readiness. Readiness, according to the Gospel of Matthew, is about living the life of the kingdom. It is about living the quality of life described in the Sermon on the Mount. Many of us can do this briefly or for short periods of time. But when the kingdom is delayed, when it takes longer for things to happen than uh, we'd like to or hope, that's when problems often arise. Being a peacemaker for a day or two is not as demanding as being a peacemaker when hostility or conflict breaks out between individuals or groups year after year. Praying for those who persecute us and make life difficult and, challen and challenging for us, well, we can do that once or maybe twice, but praying for them diligently for a long period of time, now that's difficult. Being merciful for a day or two is one thing. Being merciful to others all the time when the groom is delayed requires preparation. Over time, life will test and reveal who among Jesus' followers is prepared and ready and who is not. At the beginning of the journey of faith, you can't really tell the followers of Jesus apart. They all have lamps. They are all excited about the wedding. They all know how to sing Lord, Lord, or even Amazing Grace. But the longer the journey of faith, the later at night it gets, the clearer it becomes who is wise and who is foolish, who is prepared and who is coming up with their own plans, who is ready to ride the wave of God's intervention and action and who will be left standing on the beach it tells us who will be invited into the wedding banquet and who will be shocked indeed very shocked to discover that they have been shut out regardless of their claiming the right confession of faith in closing today I want to ask you how prepared are you how prepared are you not only for COVID-19 but for eternity. This Easter, my prayer is that we will all be at the height of preparation for when God's ultimate plan is revealed. In the meantime, stay safe everyone. That includes listening to the advice of our health professionals and national leaders. Practice social distancing. Wash hands regularly. Avoid large groups and observe other common sense measures put in place by authorities to help halt the spread of COVID-19. And of course, let us know how we as a church family can pray with you as together we face this global pandemic. God bless you and God bless Belize. Thank you for watching. God bless from all of us at Toledo Faith Outreach Christian Center.